All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I um, use XREF files. Um, it's something that you're going to be doing a lot of in junior year, where, um, and also sophomore too, where Anthony and other instructors and adjuncts will be giving you a file and they're going to be using the terminology that they want you to XREF it into your drawings. Um, a lot of times that means that it's you know a drawing coming from somebody else they've uh, they've created in their own firm. I get these kind of things all the time. So what it means is I'm just getting kind of the raw CAD of what they drew. Sometimes it's locked, meaning I'm not allowed to um, change any of the walls or change the windows, which is totally appropriate because so if an architect has drawn this it's not my role to change what they or the client has already agreed upon so i'm getting these files because in my work with fred we're then um you know adding in finishes and flooring and wall stuff and lighting and furniture and all these things that we're allowed to basically layer in on top of their plants um sometimes you can use paper space for this um we never do because ultimately we're going to still generate multiple drawings off of this. Like I said, there's going to be several more plans that we're going to create. We're also going to probably have detailed drawings. So there's going to be um, a lot more information I'm going to generate, even if it just seems like a simple project. So what I do is in this case, this was a file that came to me as just a .dwg file. Um, I could open it and start like drawing on it if I wanted. But really what I do is I still go ahead and set it all up in Project Navigator. So in this case, this was actually um, the architect, uh, Paul Dixon, who runs a really great firm out in Chatham. And we're doing, um, it's actually a barn. This is the lower level, this is the top level. So it's someone's barn that they're turning into um, their home office basically. Um, so they've decided all this with a client. They've figured out the rooms. They figured out, you know, what kind of pocket doors or actually barn doors we're putting in there. Um, some of these dotted lines are beams and things. So the architect's already gone over there, done all the measurements, figured this out with a client. Um, Fred and I, though, like I said, are going to generate a lot more drawings on top of this. So I go ahead and I set up everything from the get-go in Project Navigator. So these drawings from the architect, I'm going to put in my constructs file. So I made a constructs here. And I called it architect base file, base plans, just because there might be more plans that Fred and I do down the road, but I want to make sure that these I've recorded these as, you know, who they belong to and things like that. There's also the roof there too. So this is the first file I, I basically got from them. Um, there was another file too, let me see if I can bring it up here where um, they had their own lighting plan. So he x it. So if we zoom out in here, here's their set over here where um, they sent me. So how this worked was this was actually the guts of it here. So I got the base plan and then I got their original lighting plans. However, we blew that all apart because that's what um, we're changing. I did keep it here as reference, all these lines. And if you notice, the, the rooms aren't here because back in their office, in their files, they're using Project Navigator. They have base plans. They have views. He understandably is not going to send me all of his project files. He just sent me the base plans and then the lighting plan. But I needed this because all these red lines are um, the beams. So there's a lot of beams obviously happening in this barn. All this yellow is the lighting, which like I said, we ourselves changed. So for this project, what I did was here on the constructs tab, whoops, sorry, kept closing. There's their base plans, right? And then I set up views where I pulled the base plan in and I can kind of show you how we do that again. So I'm here on the lighting one and all I really did and this, it will kind of repeat itself is pull them in like this. So see how I just clicked on that and I'm left clicking and dragging. Now I'm not going to go ahead and do it because what my software do is warning me is that you've already done this. Do you want to create a copy? So I'm just going to hit cancel. But here are those files here. So see how they light up blue? That's how you know this part of the drawing is an XREF, means it's referencing back to the constructs file. So if I change anything, in this case, actually, if the architect changes anything, it's going to happen in this plan and then it'll get updated here in my view. So the way we set up our drawings now in CAD is, like I said, all the guts of the information is in the construct right here. Then we pull that in. It's XREF, meaning I can't change anything. I can't inadvertently by mistake, like delete a wall that's important. I'm just layering information on top of it. Now, the lighting plan is an interesting thing in that some firms do their lighting plans 
all in the constructs file. Where I work in previous employers, we put our lighting in as a layer on top of it in the view. Um, it's just kind of our own, um, there's kind of pros and cons to doing it either way. But in our case, it's a lot of times because we are getting buildings that are already drawn and then we're just layering our own lighting on top of it. At other firms I've worked at, um, we put all our lighting into constructs which we're going to do that in Revit because think about this, if you move a wall, um, all your lighting is going to change too. So you want to be able to control it all together in one place. The other views I have, I'll kind of show you some of the stuff we have here is just wall finish plan. So in this case, here's the drawing of the, the um, barn again, XREF. So see how it lights up like blue like that. These pink lines are really just my designations of what kind of wall covering there is because these outer walls are all going to be barn wood but the interior ones um they are going to have some drywall so they're going to have some wall covering um notice too there's no beams showing up here there's no lighting because again on these plans we just care right now about where the the wall finish is going so right now we're sort of early days of this project where there's just a lighting plan and wall finish um Eventually, I think there's going to be a furniture one. Don't think there's going to be floor finish because I think we're leaving all the barn wood basically just exposed, like there'll be carpets and things. But now that we get in the sheets, this is all this information that got generated from my, my sheet. So we have the lower level plan here, which is kind of just, here's our title block. So here's where, this is when it starts to look like paper space and me setting it up to print on paper. Um, this is just a kind of a blank base plan really it's kind of for Fred's use to sketch on right now and so, so it's kind of empty of everything except the beams uh, the wall finish plan is here so again we just pretty simple we're just saying where wallpaper's going and then for the lighting we have let's see we'll pull this one up here here's the lighting plan um, so this is our change so this is differ from what the architect first envisioned because then we were brought in and the, the client wanted a different lighting setup so these things are like wall sconces um and some of these too i i did like in respect to the architect i used the blocks that they were already using and they're kind of a symbolism symbols which differed a little bit from us we don't um fill that in with sc like we just have a circle um but there's all my switches dimmers three-way lighting um these are some outdoor lights things like that so so again some of them i'm copying and pasting the symbols that the um, the architect already had because again we're trying to you know make our sets ma mash together basically um but this is a really simple version of you know even though there's really just this one base plan um i didn't use paper space instead i set it up in project navigator and i have views for the drawings that like my firm is generating and then sheets are the actual kind of paper that we're gonna plot out with our title block. Um, there's also sometimes two additional stuff, like say if you look here at the wall finish, there's gonna be like fixture sheets. There might be some more um, diagrams on here too. This is a pretty simple set here. So let me, I'm gonna pause for a minute and just bring up a larger one, just so you can kind of see how big these things can get too. Let's see if we can close this down. I have a million things open now. Oh, that's not mine. <laughs> that's my kids' work. Let's see. All right. So this is just to give you um, kind of a, oops, hold on. Stop. Pause record. Oops, sorry about that blip. All right, this is just to give you an idea of the size and scope of what buildings can get. So I know in class I've used examples from the Park South um, apartment buildings down the street next to Albany Med. So in my constructs alone, there's there were two buildings. There's one that's called the six-story mixed-use buildings. Then there's the smaller complexes a little bit farther down the street that are um, kind of like three-story mixed-use homes. So um, this are the amount of constructs for that for that building. Uh, a lot of this was again, I got these kind of floor by floor from the architects because I didn't necessarily need to have the whole building because it um, you know obviously repeats itself after certain floors. Um, but so there's like 
a whole lot of files to this and some of them are dated so some of these codes are from the original from the architects i put fred and i's name in on things that we um we we did have the okay to change on our end so for example these enlarged apartments there's a couple of units on the corner that um tenants were able to combine one corner apartment with another apartment to make an even bigger kind of suite so that's what happened there these are the complex buildings let's see on this one these are the base plans for those smaller buildings too and here's the views for these so i have them in folders and then we have hundreds of views for this stuff because we did everything we did all the flooring all the wall covering all the lighting all the bathrooms all the kitchens we also did all the lobbies we did the pass through to the garage so we have files for that too this is the community room so there's lots of files just for the fitness center alone um we also did things for all the schedules so if i bring up that you can see what a flooring schedule looks like so just the charts i also kind of have separate depending on how we're kind of organizing the project and then here's the sheets so um it got a little chaotic as the project went on and i probably should have organized this better this is um some of these are in folders so here's complex one sheets for the back the kitchens here's the community room sheets um let me see if i have any folder ones some of these like set of folders with multiples um like i said i probably should have done a better job organizing this but there's there were even more shoots sheets than what you see here some of these kind of got deleted as um things changed or the project got updated too but just to give you an idea of like for a commercial project you know the amount and scale of drawings you're going to do and why it's so important to use this project navigator because there's just no way you could ever organize any of this using um, paper space too all right i just want to kind of show that as an example too and we'll turn this off now there we go